Welcome. Hello once again and welcome to the family room. Glad to have you along with us tonight, wherever you're watching from. Always glad to have you there. Glad to have you. I'm here already. <laughs> I'll put it in the chat. No, put it in the chat where you're watching from. I know we're probably going to have a ton of people from Council Bluffs because it's just blowing up. There's like over <laughs> 700 views there now. Um, I'll go ahead and apologize for the little mess up at the beginning. I guess they could hear us and all that. So I'll. You I'm have a moment behind the scenes to see what we do <laughs> in this flawless production that we do. This is the family room. This is where we come every Wednesday night. And uh, if you're catching it live or if you're watching the replay, we're glad to have you with us. Uh, again, as Jared said, let us know where you're watching from. And uh, we'll have some chat and some comments some things going on a little bit later in here. What we do in the family room is we deconstruct the sermon from Sunday. And uh, a few little announcements, things that are, so many things that are coming up. Too many. My brain is just fried. You know, it, it, <laughs> you're right. We were, I was talking to someone about it today, Megan, our children's director, and we were like shaking heads, like how this many new things lot. can you do? So if you're having a hard time keeping up, that's not just you. It might be <laughs> all too. of us. There's a lot going on. Which is a nice segue into we need more volunteers. We need more volunteers. Always <laughs> do. So put it in the chat. If you're local, I would love to help in what area and let us know. We'd be happy to find a place to plug you in. Um, we'll get to all that as we go a little bit further in there. But starting for this week, if you were there Sunday, you already know. And if you were not, you're going to hear this, <laughs> a little chat <laughs> about this. This Sunday was one of those, I got a lot of blank stares. Yeah, it was quiet. It was quiet. It was amazing. Other than me and Dylan, because we can talk to each other. So that was kind of fun. But yeah, we were talking about it. It was just... It's just one of those days. Yep. I could tell. It's kind of hard I, now that I've spoken once, mm -hmm. but I was watching you just kind of be like, man. <laughs> it's like surgery. <laughs> and he was like, it's just too, the message is too good. I was like, yeah, it's, it's hitting. <laughs> is that you what he said? Tell. Yeah, he's like, it's just too good. Because that's when you know, when it's wrecking everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was bad. I'd imagine people just walk out. Your mother-in-law uh, caught me right after uh, service and stopped me right over here and said, the reason we were so quiet is that it's just so much to take in and it was just so good. And I'm like, well, thank you, but I would have loved an amen. <laughs> in your head, you're like, that was horrible. Every now and then. <laughs> we were continuing with the series on, the summer series that we've been doing on. Walking in Wisdom. Walking in Wisdom. And Proverbs. this was the one from Proverbs, chapter 13 and verse 20. He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. And I could tell right when I read it, it was, it was going to be, be. It was going to be. It was funny too, not to get too far ahead, but when you first started and you were going through your beginning, and I was, you, you said something. I don't remember exactly what it was, and you stopped, and I said in the microphone to Dylan, I was like, "He's going to say, uh, show me your friends, and I'll show you your future." But you didn't say it until like way later, and he was like, "Oh, I'm like, there it is." Yep, I've told you that coming. since you, because you were old enough to listen. It was and good. It's true. I was expecting it. But it's a powerful thought, and uh, if you were there, chime in, um, let us know what part of it spoke to you the loudest. You all did a uh, post on uh, Sunday afternoon. Um, I don't know who did it. I don't remember now. It was a post Kelsey. that said, tell us what spoke oh, to you the loudest uh, on the Sunday morning service. And boy, oh boy, it was a lot of chat, 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 a lot of drop-ins. Um, it was nice. I love seeing engagement like that. I've, it's always nice, especially like this when we do it live and they start coming in. Um, but I love, yeah. like that was, there's, there's like, I don't know, 40 or 50, I don't know how many comments are on it now, but yeah. it was just skyrocketing. We love that. We love that. If you happen to watch it now, just drop a chat on there. Let us know where you're watching from and stay with us for the time. We're not going to be long tonight, but we want to get right into it. Uh, he who walks with wise men will be wise, uh, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. It is a consultation on your associations how important the people in your life are, who you have around you, who you let in your life, who you keep out of your life, and, and how that all affects you. It's very so, important, mm -hmm. very important. I mean, it's the, there's no really other way to say it than show me your friends and show me, or I'll show you your future. It's, I mean, it's, it, that's withstood the test of time. It, mm -hmm. It's all about who you hang out with. I mean, that's why you get, unfortunately, when you get um, like recovering drug addicts, as we know, uh, when they, get out of the situation or they come out of jail or rehab and they get immediately hooked back up with friends that are still in it or they start dating somebody that's still in it and it's unfortunate it's almost just kind of like a waiting game unfortunately and 
not saying that's always the case, but it certainly Sometimes is it tells the, story. the majority of the case. And it's I had a just couple of depressing. addicts, recovering addicts on Sunday that came up to me afterwards and said, true story, true story. It's your oh. things, your well, places, you and your people. Uh, you have to change your things, your places, and your people. And it's not just things, places, and people that you want to avoid and stay away from, but I, I think the best um, tell of that is when it is connected to uh, people that you have in your life that are taking you to a higher level. Oh, yeah. So those things anyway. are important. Uh, I confessed it. And I don't know if you, you want to dig into that, but I confessed it on Sunday that when I was a younger man, I was the living embodiment of the companion of fools. I don't know. I wasn't there when you were younger. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't really dig into that. But <laughs> <laughs> And everyone's a comedian. <laughs> no, um, no, but I can, I can understand what you're saying because certainly, you know, just from being away for a while and depending on who you're around, um, I've definitely been around different groups of people and there's been certain ones that are yeah. a little shorter on the box of crayons than others. And, you know, it, you can kind of feel yourself coming to, stooping down to their level necessarily, not that you're getting dumber or anything to not put it nicely, but it's definitely who you surround yourself with definitely plays a big yeah. influence in your life. I said one of the little comments were, uh, it's like an elevator. People take you up or people take you down. Um, That's what you said. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so true. It's, and I've seen it in my life. And, and, and since I was as, at a younger age the companion of fools, now I'm trying to flip that and go hard in the other direction. I want to surround myself with the right people, the right kinds of people. Uh, because when you have the right kinds of people in your life, everything starts to take flight. Oh, yeah. yeah. We've seen it with just everything here going on lately. Everything's just kind of starting to build a lot of momentum and it's I think a lot of it is um, a lot of the people that we have in place right now and a lot of the volunteers Absolutely. and everything they're doing and everything just kind of seems to be clicking I was thinking about that when I was driving here this afternoon how what a blessed season this is right now in our church um, uh, everything is just kind of going straight up the, the people that are showing up we've been praying for laborers and leaders leaders and laborers and they're showing up and taking those positions and moving into places that are just changing the, the look of our church. I You're one it. of those people. I love it. Changing the look. How was youth last night? You guys were in youth, there. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I had to, they played, um, they started a, a survivor game. And at first I was like, well, man, I got to preach in two weeks. Mm -hmm. And now I got to remember this game. But then I was like, well, I was kind of got involved. And I was asking, did, I don't remember all the rules, but it was hilarious. They were having a blast. Mm -hmm. I was scarfing down like the nine bags of popcorn that we had. I'm glad <laughs> that picture ended up popcorn. on the Facebook. But no, it was a lot of fun. He had a, uh, a game where they had to um, crawl under <laughs> pool noodles. Mm -hmm. And then there was a ball, two balls of duct tape. And it was wrapped up like reverse. So, it, I mean, it was, and it was cheap duct tape. So it was extremely hard to get off. And it was just hilarious watching him do it. And, um, when they went down, they could start peeling on it and try, and then he timed them, he'd stop the timer, and then they had to run back over the um, pool noodles. And the rule was supposed to be, if you knocked it down, you had to put it back up and start all over again. That just went straight out of the window with the teens. Mm -hmm. But it was hilarious, and then it ended up being one of those things that kind of took a little longer than <laughs> expected. And um, but he had a good lesson at the end, and it was just something, I don't know if any of the teens are watching. summer series he's doing? Yeah, it's, it's, it's um, what was it? The Struggle is Real, what was on the TV. I think it's doing a Survivor Series. Yeah, to go yeah. with the game. And um, cool. there was a lot of stuff that kind of he hit on and then with the game as well that I think um, I'm speaking again on the 15th and I think it kind of coincided a good little bit with that. Have your teenagers here Tuesday night, 6 to 8 p.m. I see several people saying, chiming in, amen, amen, amen. Deborah Forson, you Ooh. can't play in the same playground that made you sick. That's good. There you go. I wish I had a pen to write that down. <laughs> we'll we'll read one. it in the chat later. You can't play in the same playground that made you sick. Man. That is absolutely true. How important it is uh, for people that you have in your life. Um, the wise man will walk with wise men. Uh, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. I said something that I told you before we started that I wanted to go back and revisit, and your eyebrows went up, and I don't know if that was a warning to, to do it or not, but I'm going to have to do it. It's a hard thing to do, to do positive things when you're surrounded by negative people. That's for sure. It's hard. It's to exhausting. Do. 
It's a, thank you. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. You know, they're always in your ear and they're always, you know, complaining and murmuring and, and grumbling about it, telling you why it can't happen and why you can't do it. Uh, and the longer you are around there, it, it begins to wear you out. But the thing I said was, it sound, this is harsh. So in the context, it is Matthew chapter 7 and verse 6. Jesus said, do not give what is holy to the dogs. And <clears throat> do not cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them underfoot and they turn and tear you into pieces. And I said, dogs and pigs don't understand value. Yep. And I said, yeah, because um, we've got a new puppy now. Uh, <laughs> shout out to... Shout out to Calvin, watching from Bailey's Gym. But no, we, um, we had a golden retriever given to us. Um, her name is Bambi, and she's, she's fun, but she's only a year old, mm -hmm. and she was crated before we got her. And so it's just kind of a process of she's not quite used to being left when we leave the house. Uh, so they definitely don't understand value because there's been several things and shoes that have been destroyed. Um, she ate Riley's pit vipers and now they're, of course, they're all back ordered and we have to wait. So that's fun. But no, it's definitely in pigs. I mean, they just spend all their time wallowing around in mud. But, but now pigs are pretty smart. I understand that pigs are smart. I'm not a farmer, so don't hold me on this, but somebody will. But they don't understand the complete purpose of, and value of a thing. And I, and I likened that to people like sometimes when people leave your life, um, sometimes you have this tendency to think, well, they left me because I'm not worthy. And I tried to make the point. I hope that I did make the point, but that's, that's not true. Maybe sometimes they just didn't have the capacity to recognize the value of who you are. And that's why Jesus said, I will never leave you because he recognizes the value of who you are. Kathy Cochran is chiming in. Great quote, Deborah. Uh, Calvin is, hello from Bailey's Gym. Old man. <laughs> Can we delete these chats? Can we take these comments out no, of there? No, it's there. It's there for the world. <laughs> no. um, oh, shoot. What were you saying? About the value of a thing. The value of a person. thing. And they may have left you because, and that Jesus said, I'll never leave you. Yeah, we know, obviously, Jesus will never leave us. Um, but Kelsey and I, actually, just this afternoon, we're having the conversation about, you know, people that leave your life or leave your work or situation or the church or whatever it may be. And... Um, I think it's important to, to know, I guess, because I told her, I almost laugh about it now because back years and years ago, if we had people leaving the church like that that were helping out or anything like that, I would like be freaking out. You know, you're like, oh man, what are we gonna do now? How are we gonna do this? And now I'm just like, okay, well, obviously there's a reason for someone exiting your life or exiting a role. And it could just be, you know, that they wanna go do their own thing or they have a different value for somewhere yep. else. And so I just look forward to if, people are being removed from my life that just means God has something better in store for me mm -hmm. so I kind of now instead of being like oh well this sucks what do I do now now I'm kind of like okay well obviously the next is going to be better because it's always just going to go up and go forward so if somebody has walked out of your life that could apply probably for a good thing it might be a good reason that, and know? I kind of I think I I can't remember if it's in the sermon I'm building for the youth or a different one but um, and I've already lost my train of thought now on it. But basically, oh, basically, you know, when we read the Bible, it's it's it, well, it's, it's easy to forget that we're reading it after the fact. Mm -hmm. So we we already know. Okay, well, we already know what this person went through and how it ends up. They didn't know that at the time. Right. They had to live it in real time. So you read, you know, however I don't remember how long. I just totally had a brain fart on how long it took Noah to build the ark. <laughs> 120 years. 120 years. <laughs> yes, I know what I said. I said what I said. Um, 120 years. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you figure you start a job and like six months are already like, man, when's my, when's my next raise? Mm -hmm. Or a year. And you're like, how do I get manager? This dude was hammering wood for 120 years. And you know, everybody around him was just laughing at him the oh, whole yeah. time. Till it so started raining. Yeah, till it started raining. And then it was... Um, yeah. How about you guys? Tell us some high value people that you've had in your life. I mean, and have you seen this uh, play out in any way in your life? Uh, I know that I have. I, I have had so many high value people walk into my life. And if I started, the list would just get crazy. Uh, but, but I can give a few. I mean, uh, our pastoral care team, uh, those men and women that are here between us over 240 something years of combined ministry experience. Phenomenal that they put wisdom into your life and, and, and friends like Bob who is up in Knoxville. Yeah, it was cool to see his input the other day. Yeah, Bob, my buddy. I haven't seen him there. forever. Uh, 
Thank you. He, he was chiming in about our announcement about a possible something coming up. Can we broach that on Family Room? On something coming up? The school. Oh, the school. Yeah. Well, you announced it. I actually, I, you said you were going to announce it Sunday, and then I guess I kind of forgot, so I was a little, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay, we're going there. But no, I'm actually, I'm really excited on, on the vision and I think the foundation we have for it. I think we have really, with Dylan and just, well, I mean, I don't want to sound conceited, but all of us together and the vision that we have, and especially talk about have high value people, mm -hmm. um, it also makes you high value targets. Mm -hmm. And he, and I can't remember if it was you or him that had said in the first meeting something about, you know, as we start doing this, prepare for the attacks. It's so it hasn't quite started yet, but it's definitely going to come and that's going to, you know, be tough to navigate, but it's always important to remember who we have on our side and who wins in the end. It's a real thing. I see some other people, Tanya says, making room. That's exactly sometimes what happens. God makes room in your life. I announced it. I missed it Sunday, and, I'm, and I'll mention it to you guys here in the family room to have you guys pray with us about it. We are, for the first time in our 38 years of, of ministry here, we are seriously considering um, the establishment of a first-run, high-quality Christian school here at Family Worship Center. Um, for 38 years, we've been asked and we've always said no. But this, this season, this time for us just seems like it's the right time. High value people, the right people in the right places are coming in. And we're getting, so if you guys have any comment or feedback on that, uh, if you would just hit the button, say yes or whatever you think. But, but nothing less than praying for us in that regard because we want to do this right and make a difference. And along with that, there are so many wonderful, great things that are about to kick up. Small group season is about mm -hmm. to take off. We're working okay. on that. Um, still obviously working on the app. I actually spoke with them, I think it was yesterday or the day before, and there was a mistake on their part. So that should be, hopefully, I know I keep saying it for like four weeks now, but it should be up in the next couple of days, <laughs> something like that. I'm just as anxious as everybody else is, trust me, because I'm ready to get going on those got groups. Things to do. Got things um, to do. Kind of have the website just about done, just a few little things to touch up here and there. But yeah, the, the small groups, Boogie's starting one. Um, extension? Extension. Come on. That's Shout cool out name. to Boogie. There's a group on it um, already on the, I think it's on the church page. Really? Yeah, the church page. Kelsey made a, a, an event for it, not a group. She made okay. an event for it that you can um, put that you're interested in or you're, you're signing up. We're kind of still working out the details on that. It's for 18 to 25 year olds. So if you are under that or over that, no, <laughs> no. Um, there will be another small group for you probably at a different time if there's not one already right now. But this one is specifically for 18 to 25 year olds um, because they have, you know, they, they, they come out of the youth and then when they're done with that, you know, I guess I'm a little biased because since I grew up in this, it's kind of like, well, just come on out. But there's a lot of kids that haven't, and I think it's a good thing to get them a little bit extra teaching instead of just jumping right into the adult world, especially with how just stupid school school is now with just indoctrination and all the stuff that they have with kids going on. Um, but I'm excited for that. I'm excited for Boogie. That'll be really good. That'll be re He's excited. I told him I'd give him a shout-out tonight. So shout-out to Boogie. Oh, they wanted a wave. I had to do a wave. There's but um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the groups. I'm looking forward to doing more groups. I want to see just, just my vision is just a massive, just, just little pockets of small groups everywhere and just meeting, you know, wherever they want, whenever they want and just doing life together. I think that'll be really cool to see. Try to let everybody know that, you know, just a reverb back to a few weeks ago, uh, a thing that I was doing, uh, walking and praying here one night and, um, I was praying, God send hundreds, you know. And remember I said, God mm -hmm. stopped me and said, why are you not asking me for thousands? And then immediately after that, you started doing all of these different things. What a blessing a school would be, Deborah. Thank you, we, we believe it. Uh, this group, the group will be, Kelsey said. The, the group, group will, will be, be on the app, app. yeah, as so. soon as it comes out. I could put it now and it would be online, mm -hmm. but it's difficult to navigate, so it's, I would just kind of wait until the app's ready. So the things that you're doing, though, are positioning to reach, they're literally right now reaching thousands. You were mm -hmm. telling me before we started how many people are being reached through Facebook, YouTube, and all yeah, that. Yeah, it's, especially this last week, um, 
Kelsey and I, we started hitting a little bit more on the reels and the YouTube shorts. And those are just, especially on Facebook, it's just going through the roof. When you got here, you said your, your thing was to go farther, faster, and reach as many people as possible, as fast as possible. And all of those things that you're doing, I mean, they are details that take a while to develop. Um, not letting too many cats out of the bag, but you are doing, redoing an entire website. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, yeah. No, that it's just, it's been a challenge because like I had told you, I had started it and gotten a little bit and then I was just kind of like, eh. And then with wanting to push the app, kind of moved a whole different direction. And I guess God's just really working on me with, um, probably opening my mouth before I should because like that with the website I got too far ahead and then I was like nope we'll stop and scratch it all and go right back from the beginning and then the same thing with the sermon from the last time I preached at youth and then last week I told you I was speaking about something else and left here and he was like nope not that anymore so I just almost just want to stop talking <laughs> and just wait till he yeah. tells me what to do but I did the same thing when I was it's fun up. it's I'm fun Tanya busting at the seams. That's a fact. We are we are we're thankful uh, that our church is filling up. We're having to find room to put everybody. We'll we'll continue to find room. Ten, thousands, thousands and ten thousands. thousands. Ooh, wow. ten thousand. I like that. We we pray for us because we're we're going after it. We want to reach as many people as we can as fast as we can. Uh, a lot of plans going on with the school. A lot of plans that are going uh, coming up with things that we've got to do. Speaking of schools, shout out to Megan Belcher and her team. Yes. Yes, with the backpacks and yep. everything. I think, yeah, was that last week? Yep. That they filled them all up, gave those all out on Sunday, and then they did some more for the youth oh, wow. um, Tuesday night. So that was nice. Yeah, they had 100 backpacks yeah, on Sunday. Yeah, was a lot. Uh, there were over 100 children here in our children's ministries on Sunday. I remember I forgot that we were putting them on the stage, and I was like, what is this giant black trash bag on the stage <laughs> when I came in Sunday morning? So Megan, Brooke, Kathy, everybody on that team, great job. You did good. The Back to School Bash was amazing, um, and I, she, we already are developing t-shirts for next year. So there's a lot of little things like that that are going on. They're kind of cool. Lot of what are these little, little stickers that I see all around now? I'm starting to the see. The stickers? Uh, well, I don't know if we're ready for that one yet. No, we'll we'll get there. I wanna I wanna have all that stuff. I like stuff to that, tell everything. <laughs> well, when we first started this, you were like, I like to do it subtly, and now we've flipped roles, right? and I I'm trying to keep everything. it tight lipped. There's stuff going on. <laughs> no, we have we are uh, working on generating the new family logo stickers. Um, there's a couple people that have them. It's mainly it was just a trial run. Yeah, you've got one. Boogie, Dylan, kind of the people on the team's going to have one. We Kathy's only ordered, I think we ordered like six mm -hmm. just to see how the printing was because you never, same thing with shirts. It, we're trying to look at getting some shirts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Kelsey's designing those and they look good, but unfortunately the ones that we ordered kind of turned out to not be the exact quality that we were looking for because um, we definitely don't want to give, these people give so much to the church that I feel it's a disservice to give them something that just looks bad. Mm -hmm. So to me, and I think it's important to her too, that we have a nice fitting, nice, um, not like 100% cotton, a nice blend, so it's nice and soft, just a high quality shirt that I think they deserve. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And if you happen to be on a 207 uh, within the next couple of weeks, driving by. Oh yeah. Take a look. Just look over at our building. Just well, they're definitely going to see it. <laughs> just look over at our building. I'm not going to tell you what's happening, uh, but it is going to be incredible. Some beautiful things that are going on that we're working on. Uh, I just the level of excitement around here right now is like it's peaking. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, there's that's why it, that's what we were talking about. There's just like a, that momentum yeah. building, and it's almost somebody else had just said it to me the other day. They just they can it's like you can just feel it and you're just waiting for it to just poof. and that's that thing hey jim thank you tanya guys for praying we appreciate that pray because there's a lot going on and, and like well you said it a few minutes ago the the spiritual warfare the challenges are going to come uh, and they will uh, and one of the most powerful things about a, a church is unity and so what we're trying to do is make sure that we maintain the unity of our church keep people together keep people working together and loving one another uh, so Pray that we are able to do that successfully moving forward. What's next? What's coming up? Everything. All right. Well, we got, what, do you, what you preach on Sunday? You want to give that away too? 
Mm, yes, as a matter of fact, I do. I, I'm, I'm, I wasn't going to, but I will. Uh, Kelsey Cochran, when the website is up, the link to all that will be there. So it'll be there. Um, this Sunday, actually, you're going to help me uh, at the end of this. He's going to help me this Sunday at the end of it. Um, you know, our church is family. Our church is Family Worship Center. Uh, so this might be the last in the series that I'm doing out of the book of Proverbs. And I want to talk about the, the family and the blessing of that. Uh, that the, the, the curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked, uh, but He blesses the house of the just. And so we're going to be talking about family and how to position your, your family. Just, thanks for bringing that up. How to position your family for blessing. How important that is that you set that foundation and you position your family, not just yourself, but your, your entire family and generations to be blessed. And you're going to help me with it. Well, like I, I can't remember. You had asked for a little bit of input, and I think one mm -hmm. of the things I told you was the, the, a family blessing like that is really like a, a legacy type of thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. which, which, you know, going back to the school. Um, but legacy, yeah, you, you don't want to just nobody wants to just store up something just for themselves and then when they leave their kids have nothing obviously you always want to leave your family better than they came into the world um that's just i think that's just maturity that's just growth Absolutely. it's biblical yeah and it's just something that you should always strive for is just pushing towards making sure those after you are taken care of and and you're Preaching on a Sunday, so coming at it. And so whatever I'm doing, you guys, just make your plans to be here, uh, to be here on Sunday. Uh, come on, early. Yeah. Uh, if you have not been to our team meetings, maybe uh, we'll give you an invitation. Team meeting starts at 9:20. Uh, every, you know, it's normally just our teams that meet right here in the sanctuary. But if you'd like to participate, if you'd like to see what we do, be here at 9:20. We give a, a little 10-minute talk. It's going to be fantastic, and. Um, Come early, meet some people, have some coffee, fellowship a little bit. That way you're in your seat on time, asking everybody again. We're yeah, to push move forward because it's getting so packed. Move the forward. that show up a little fill later. Fill in the front seats first, if you will. Yes. You guys that are always here, come up, sit in the front, fill in the front seats. And we're trying to block off some back rows for people that, that unfortunately get here a little bit late and they need to find a space. So we're looking forward to that. And so. one of the things too I would like to point out is the front rows are always like everybody just hides from getting on the front <laughs> row. It, here's a little secret with this building at least. Uh, if you think it's too loud, it's actually a lot quieter on the first two rows. So Sit if in the you first come early and you get up on the first two rows, nobody he's not going to spit on you or anything like that, but it's actually a little bit quieter. That's just a fun fact. There's also... Um, Earplugs in the information right. center. I forgot about that. We, so we're trying to do everything that we can for everybody. So now's a good time to hop in there. Sit in the front two rows. That's why Rick and Robbie are always on the second row. Move so. them up to the front. <laughs> I don't think you're going to get Rick <laughs> on the front row. So looking forward to that. Looking forward to seeing you Sunday. So what else do we need to bring to the people? Um, some of the things that I wrote down okay. from Sunday. Um, it's hard to motivate a mindset of fear. And I thought that was good because, I mean, with everything now, they're just, I think with just how the last few years have been with COVID and all that fun stuff, mm -hmm. everybody just has, even if you weren't really as bought into it at the time as you were, there's still just a mindset of, of fear, really. You know, when you go out and I remember when, you know, we had the whole thing with masks and, you know, some, we didn't want to wear masks and other people wanted you to wear masks. And then it was just like, well, I'll just wear a mask because I don't want this person in the store to be yelling at me because, you know, and it's just, there's just that, there's so much fear and it's hard to motivate people. And um, something on top or something on topic with that, I was listening to one of the Elevation sermons and he had talked about, he had ran into someone who hadn't been to church for a while. Mm -hmm. And the guy had asked him, he's like, well, you know, are you guys back having church? And he was like, yeah, you know, we've been in here for a couple months now. I was like, oh, I just, you know, I haven't gone because of the COVID thing. And, and then it ended up, the young guy like walked off and then came back up to him. He's like, man, I want to apologize. Like, he's like, I knew that you guys were already there. I just got so used to not going <laughs> and being at my house. Oops. So wow. uh, there's a lot of, I mean, I feel like that's a lot of thing with people now too, is like, there's a lot of people just scared to leave the house and do just yeah. simple tasks. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, here with as much growth as St. Augustine is seeing, you can't drive down the road without feeling like you're going to get ran off or True. ran over. True. It's just crazy. Tying uh, that back to the here, walks with wise men will be wise. That's one of the reasons why we have, um, we, we really do encourage people to come to church. It's not because we just need to see you in the building. It's not because we want to fill the building. I think wherever there is life, there is growth. But when you come, the, the scripture says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. But when you get together with other believers of like mind, it's like iron sharpening iron. I was about to bring that up. You get sharper. You get stronger. It encourages you. So if people were dealing with a mindset of fear, you get around people of faith, and it stirs you up. You want to bring up more about that? Well, you just said a mindset of fear and a mindset of faith. Um, so just a snippet of my sermon, I told you I was speaking on David and Goliath. And part of me is like, man, that's like the easiest thing to do. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I kind of have a little bit of a different turn on it. But just one of the points that basically that you just said was um, David answered Saul's fear with faith. Mm -hmm. Saul wanted him to go out in armor. <laughs> I'm gonna really go ahead, tell sermon us. Now. So Saul, <laughs> Saul wanted him to put on his armor. And granted, I don't know how, Saul was what, like over six foot tall or something like he's that? He's a big man. He's a big man. David is a boy. He's a shepherd. Mm -hmm. There's no reason the armor should have fit him to begin with. And then what I found interesting as it stood out to me the other night was David said, I can't wear these. I haven't tested them. Mm -hmm. And he went out not wearing any armor, but he went out in the thing that he had already had tested was his faith in God. Come on. Somebody give that man an offering. <laughs> That's good. When is that? When are you doing that? That is a, uh, April. August 15th, two weeks from yesterday. Weeks from yesterday. Okay. Is anybody invited to that? Or? All the youth. All of the people that are up. I don't 13 know, to 18. 13 to 18. Be yeah. there for that. All right. There's fun games, and they have the survivor thing and all that. And uh, there's always food as well. That's, <laughs> that's good. They had popcorn chicken and popcorn and... We had pizza the other day, but it's just, a, it's a fun time. It's a good time. And it's a good community to build growth with. Kelsey, people are scared to be judged. That's why they stay with a group of people that they're comfortable with, not necessarily the best for them. Good comment. How come you're not here on the couch with us to uh, break that down <laughs> for us? We need to get you and Kathy both into the house. Actually, funny on that, I was talking to Jerry. Um, uh, she's what, Kelsey's mom, um, and she's probably watching tonight. She's been watching. And I asked her if she ever wanted to come on with us. And I said she didn't have to do it tonight. But she might. So I just... It, really? We said that we would start bringing some people on. So maybe next week we'll cool. find somebody that wants to sit with us and give their input. Because that'd be cool as well to hear. What do y'all think? Think that's a good idea or a bad idea? Sure, thanks. Who would you like to hear? Would you like to hear from Kathy, Kelsey, Jerry? Uh, I'm already Belcher, here. Dylan Belcher. Maybe we might ought to bring Dylan on here sometime to kind of bust down a little bit about the school. Yeah, I'd rather him only talk about that and not other stuff because he's so smart with his 97 degrees and <laughs> doctorates in the doctorate that we'll just look. <laughs> He'll have to dumb it down yeah. for us so we can. <laughs> it's easier for them to stay with the pigs and the dogs and elevate themselves and risk judgment and fear. Amen to that. Good comment. Yes, complacency robs. De look at Tanya. Complacency robs destiny. Easier for them to stay with the pigs and the dogs than to elevate themselves and risk judgment and fear. See, why, the, where is this? The comments are better than the program. So thank you for that. Keep it coming. Where's Kathy Cochran? But, and to touch on what she said a second ago, um, people are scared to be judged. That's why they stay with a group of people they're comfortable with. I had written down, your, cow, your crowd is a compass. Oh, man, yeah. Forget about that. You had, you had said that, and that just instantly, I mean, I scribbled all around it because that one really stood out to me. And the, it, right above it, it's the power of association. And obviously, it all just goes back to who you're connected with. But, man, the, the crowd is a compass. If they're going the complete wrong way. I mean, you talked about the two processions, and you had Jesus and his crowd and the funeral procession and their crowd, and they're going opposite directions. Right, Luke chapter 7. And you had talked about the walking dead, and I doubt you've ever seen the show, but, you know, Never the thing it. with zombies or whatever is whenever one starts to move, they all just kind of get caught up, and they all start moving together, mm -hmm. and then they end up in this, just they call it a herd. Oh, I haven't wow. seen the show in years, but I had watched it for a while, and it's they call it a herd, and it's just, they all just, as a crowd goes and they hear the noise and then they just keep, and I, that's what instantly popped in my head when you're talking about it's it. It's a sermon. <laughs> JC, it only takes a couple bold lines for it to be contagious. Come on, Proverbs 28.1, the wicked flee, no man pursues, the righteous are as bold as a lion. 
I love that. That's the hat I got. You've got the shirt. Ed Killebrew, it's good to see him. I haven't seen him forever. Where you been, man? Come back in the Ed Killebrew, how are you? Kelsey will have the flu next week. How are you? <laughs> the mayor of Palakas in the house. Uh, Kelsey will have the flu next week. No, yeah. you won't. Jesus well, is a healer. Uh, we'll get her on a Zoom meeting and just have her head on the laptop and spun around. Um, the gift of goodbye. Woo-hoo. Is there anything you wanted to touch on that? Because I thought that was a good one. You know, there were a lot of lines like that during that service, that sermon, um, and you, you'll learn as you preach that you can sometimes gauge reaction with eyebrows. Like sometimes when you'll say something, people go, <laughs> <laughs> you see the eyebrows go up. When I said that, you have got to develop the gift of goodbye. I could see eyebrows, like people sat up and the eyebrows went up, because that's so uncommon in the church and, and among Christian people, because we feel like we've got to have arms wide open and just everything and everybody come into my life. Not even Jesus did that. And he came to seek and to save that which was lost. The Son of Man has come to call the sinner, not the righteous. So he had this, there's this criterion. And in John chapter 6 is where I, where I got that from, is that when he spoke to his disciples and there was a great crowd and he said what he said and, and they, they started to walk off. Instead of him chasing after him, he just looked over at his disciples and said, will you go also? And I think he didn't want his... He didn't want his influence to be watered down with people that were just clinging on for the food and the miracles. But he wanted the people that had the faith to walk with him through what he was going to have to to walk through. So that goes back to in the end of the Bible when he or yeah, when he says, um, you know, if he doesn't want lukewarm, mm -hmm. you're either hot or cold. There's there's really no middle ground. Basically, if you're lukewarm, you may as well just be cold because it. You no have use. to have the ability. If you're going to live a successful, blessed life, uh, it sounds terrible. Even when I say it, sometimes I go, ooh. But you have to have the ability to say, God bless you. And that's where you're going. That's not where I'm going. And where I'm going, and this was a line that I gave Tommy Miller. Hi, Tommy. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I said was where I'm going is too important for me to not guard the threshold of my life. And I want to speak that over your life. I mean, that, I think that's true in your case. Uh, because your journey is going to go a lot farther than mine has. And I've got not as much miles on the road as left in front of me as you do. So guard the threshold of your life. Whoever comes into or out of your life, it's going to be so important. you got to have the gift of goodbye. Yeah. Uh, and you've uh, got to have the gift of hello. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's, um, I think you can see the change <laughs> after oh, being with Kelsey, who uh, constantly you know, whips me on the backside to get me to quit being so quiet uh it's definitely a lot different now um but no i'm i'm thankful for it she's she's got some tough love sometimes but it has made me a much better man right know your right limits time. and your boundaries if you're empty and drained yourself you can't help anyone who do you think she's talking to i don't know i'm wondering when she's gonna stand up and preach now with all these things <laughs> but that is that is good knowing your limits and boundaries i i had said it i think to her the other day um with a lot of stuff anywhere in business or in church, you know, it's always, oh, we got to think outside of the box and all this. And I'm like, no, we need to think. You got to think inside the box because you have, we have limits. We don't have an unlimited supply of people or staff or money yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would love to have a just surplus to where we can do everything that we want Amen. already with the vision that we have for the church. And, you know, you spell million. M-I-L-L-I-O-N. Yes. But anyways, back to what I was saying. Um, Whoever does not receive your listen to your words, yeah, see, like that. The gift of goodbye. There's Dylan. Shake the dust off your feet. Good to see him. Um, but knowing your limits, it's, it's important to know your limits. Some limits, yes, you can push through and push, push past. But I do think it is important to know them so you can operate in them and have a, uh, a more finer tuned focus. And I think that's something God's really working on with me lately is because the way my head is, um, you know, I want to get this done and I want to get, I see all these things that need to get done and I'll start one and somebody will ask me about the next and my, I'll instantly start working on that. And then somebody asked me about this one and I'll go to that. And then I have to just, and it's finally, I'm like, okay, I need to just kind of take a minute and slow down, mm -hmm. do this one, knock it out the best you can do that one, knock it out the best you can focus. Beautiful things. Kathy Murray from in North Carolina. It's hard to reason with people who don't see an issue with their actions. Let them go. Unfortunately, sometimes you have to. That is the Amy Hernandez. perfect kind of thing to, to have with the gift of there. goodbye. 
A lot of great comments. The gift of goodbye. So this was, that was the thing. That's what I wanted to go after. What we wanted to go after tonight was to recap the sermon from Sunday. To let you guys kind of chime in on that. To drop some wisdom in your life and hear your wisdom. Boy, I love the comments. I love yeah, this is great. You guys There's have a lot say, of so thank interaction. You. Love it. Uh, even after we go off, and this is on the replay, drop the comments on there. You can click share and pass it on to other people. Uh, we're excited about what God is doing in our church right now. Very. Uh, and the last point that I wanted to bring up, not to keep us going any longer, um, was, and I think I wrote it down a little bit different than how you said it, but basically it was you walk with the wise or you fumble with fools. Mm-hmm. Nothing. WWFF. With, I don't remember. You said it somewhere around no, there, but that. you had, you, it, was, it was a, you basically, it was one of those things you kind of hit and then just kept going. And I was like, ah, trying to write it down and missed some of it. But, that's what stood out to me. Walk with the wise or fumble with the fools. And with the same thing, how we talked about the light and the darkness and all that with the previous sermons on here, um, was just the same thing. The people in the dark, you know, they don't know where they're walking. They stumble. They're falling. They have no idea what they're doing. And it's important to be a, a shining light. And so, wisdom. Kathy Cochran, I have one more Wednesday night class to go. Hallelujah. I'm not even sure what that means, but... You're going to get that high school diploma. Girl. You, you, you just keep at it, girl. I don't know what, what that means. If you want to tell me what that means, tell me. But um, <laughs> how important it is. You, you mentioned light. You, you're one, of your, you're, you're one of your favorite subjects is the light. You mentioned that a lot. You talk about that a lot. Uh, which probably highlights the, kind of some of the difference in your thinking and my thinking. Because I, my thinking can sometimes get to the other side of the darkness and, and battling the darkness. But your focus seems to be on the light and elevating people in that, that reality. Uh, two weeks from, uh, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday, I think I'm going to preach on the people who have sat in darkness have seen a great light. I heard a great thing on that the other day, and it just stirred my soul. So talking about getting to the light. You want me to send you my notes? I'm going to steal all of your notes. As a matter of fact, I'll just invite you up and let you, well, let you do think, it. Well, I think, to me, it's important because there's already enough negativity in the world. And I try to be, I don't always hit the mark and, you know, I'm grumpy a lot and all that stuff. But that's <laughs> mainly because I have, I have my own things going on in my head and the way I think and things like that. Um, and that's kind of why I put that quiet song on, on Facebook because yeah. that one's just completely wrecking me. Goodness. But to me, it's, I try to stay positive as much as I can and always look for the, the uh, brighter side of things because you do. You do. There's, just, there's just too much negativity in the world. And, and I don't have time for that. I've got enough that I can be sad about. Why add more to it? So, you know, if somebody's complaining and all that stuff, which I'm guilty of as well, I'm not pointing any fingers, I just think it's important that it really is. we get beat over the head enough with how horrible we are with just... If this person's not telling you you're a piece of trash in society, this side is telling you you're a piece of trash in society. If they're not, then that one's telling you that these are, and it's just, there's barely any love anymore, and everybody's just running around slapping faces, and I'm just, We're live. Step, yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> no, but no, it's that's just good. important to me to just be positive. I and, think that's a glimpse life. of your, your future. I, I think that's a glimpse of your, the future attitude that you're going to bring to this house. Um, not just now, but or not just then, but even now, bringing it here uh, to encourage us. It encourages us to remember. Keep it, keep, it, keep it up. Keep it light. Speak life. That's why I want my vision with the small groups. So I keep saying, you know, like I want the big pockets because mm-hmm. I think as iron, iron sharpens iron, I think it's important for people to um, build each other up. I, I saw um, when I was studying for the light in the darkness sermon, actually, I was reading something on C.S. Lewis and J.R.R., mm-hmm. the guy that, Tolkien or however you say his name, mm-hmm. that wrote uh, The Lord of the Rings, and Kelsey's probably screaming at me right now because I butchered his name, but she doesn't know J.R. Tolkien. Fun fact, my wife told me that she's not a nerd and she has never seen uh, Lord of the Rings. I put it on one day, and with the first line, she quoted it for like two minutes straight. <laughs> um, it was beautiful. That's why I married her. No, but it was, they, they used to just go and hang out and build each other up, a whole core group of them. Mm-hmm that we're all like-minded and all, you know, Christians and stuff like that. Um, and I think that's just important. I, and I'm not saying we're, we've been dropping the ball on that here, but it's certainly something that I'm striving towards. Because um, I would like to do it as well. I don't have a massive group of 
mm-hmm. friend. I mean, you know, I have, I would call them more acquaintances than friends. I'm kind of that guy that keeps everybody more at arm's length and there's not a whole lot that gets to see the really close inside. Um, but I would love to do life with people that are like-minded and, you know, just want to go out and just hang out or go fishing or camping in a tent. Well, y'all I don't did know, that. Something. Y'all went to the gymnastics thing. I saw the video. Y'all also Yeah, that, that. Oh, my gosh. That, that was, was so fun. much fun. That so, was, I want to do that again. <laughs> it was for the so kids, good. but. R- Gookin, RJ, welcome. Don't quiet remember. is so good. It is. It's, it's nice to shut the noise off every now and then. Yeah. So, but small groups are coming, and that's what's going to be happening. And within the next couple of weeks, we'll be mentioning them a little bit more. Uh, if you joined us along the way, uh, we're talking about extent, what is it, extension? Extension. 18 that's, to 25 yeah. year olds, a new small 25. group is coming up, a lot of things coming up. So, we'll let you know as it goes. That's good. All right. We'll see you Sunday and again next week. See you Sunday, room. right here again on Wednesday. We appreciate you guys being there. God bless. Have a good night. We'll see you next time.